Okay, welcome, welcome. Hello, welcome to April 25th in the Daily Stoic. We are going to see what this daily entry means. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, the name of today's entry is There's Nothing Wrong With Being Wrong. And Marcus Aurelius starts us off today. If anyone can prove and show to me that I think and act in error, I will gladly change it. For I seek the truth by which no one has ever been harmed. The one who is harmed is the one who abides in deceit and ignorance. Okay, I love the first part of this. If anyone can prove and show to me that I think and act in error, I will gladly change it. And then he goes into the next bit, which is, for I seek the truth by which no one has ever been harmed. So now he's bringing in this harmed idea. And he's saying no one's been harmed by truth. The one who is harmed is the one who abides in deceit and ignorance. I know what he's saying, but I don't know how to validate it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to, it seems true what he's saying, but I don't know how to prove that mm. no one has been harmed by the truth. And that the one who is harmed is someone who abides in deceit and ignorance. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of those things that sounds nice. It sounds true, but like, how would I go about verifying that? Mm. That's a hard one. Yeah. Yeah. Because when somebody tells you something that you don't agree with, uh, you, it's hard to see it. Right. And so then you don't agree with it. And when you do see it and agree with it, then. I, and my, you know, my challenge is I think I agree with it, but my, I don't, I can't map the logic of it. Mm -hmm. Like I see what he's saying. I like it. I think I agree with it, but then it's like, what's the logic underneath it that makes that thing true? What do you got in there? Mm. Nothing? No. You want to move on to Ryan? Yeah, let, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's see what he, how he explains it. It's not making a lot of sense to me. Yeah, okay. Someone once attempted to argue with the philosopher Cicero by quoting something he had said or written. This person claimed Cicero was saying one thing now, but had believed something different in the past. His response... I live from one day to the next. If something strikes me as probable, I say it. And that is how, unlike everyone else, I remain a free agent. No one should be ashamed at changing his mind. That's what the mind is for. A foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds, Emerson said, adored by little statesmen and philosophers and divines. That's why we should go, that's why we go to such lengths to learn and expose ourselves to wisdom. It would be embarrassing if we didn't end up finding out if we were wrong in the past. Remember, you're a free agent. When someone points out a legitimate flaw in your belief or in your actions, they're not criticizing you. They're presenting a better alternative. Accept it. Yeah, I think that that's pretty much like mission impossible you know, to, to accept it from other people to tell you that you did something wrong. Like that's, that's not how people accept change or something, you know? 
He's saying, do, do it. Yeah, he's giving you the order to be the one who yeah, says, be, it doesn't matter what other people, people do, do, but like... You be the one who take take criticism as like, hey, this is something that's supposed to improve me. Yeah. Right? Um, but, yeah, it's very... Um, I'm not saying it's rare. Maybe that's happening, but like m- what's mostly... Um, what I mostly experience is the opposite of like people don't want to you know they don't want they they reject your um comment of how they could be doing it better they say no sure and yeah and he's not giving like he's not even talking about that aspect which is like delivering the criticism to somebody else and what is the best way way of doing something like that to get them to help them with the change or or what yeah so like that's a different sort of that's the other side of this coin but this is like the fuck, like it hurts to, it hurts to like be open to the information coming from the external world that I can be doing something better. Like that is like really difficult to be open to receiving that. And um, I feel like I'm getting more open to it because I see how it benefits me in the end. Like I see how if I were to take in all of this and actually do the hard thing and change, I will be a better version of myself on the other side of it that I will enjoy being with more in addition to like other people will enjoy this version of me more. Yeah, yeah. For, for ourselves, we, we can say, hey, I, I, yeah, it's hard to hear criticism, but, it, but it's like I got to squeeze from it the the things that I could improve and then I'm, maybe they they align with the the things that I already kind of know that I need to improve and now I'm getting confirmation from somebody in the form of criticism saying hey you do need to improve in this come on right so like you I want to be that person who says oh wow okay cool I don't want to hear it with these critical ears I want to hear it with these learning ears or these interesting how to do it better ears uh, type of a way of hearing it Um, and that gets very difficult too you know because sometimes um, it's right on the border of what somebody's telling you to do something differently and that differently is not necessarily better than how you're doing it and now it's just different right you might have very similar or the same outcome or something and you just like used to doing it certain way and now you just you might have this like well why you know you might have that might create an argument essentially the criticism right because um, it's hard to take everything on from every criticism out there. yeah right? at some well, you point you do need to be like you're gonna criticize the criticism you well know, yeah exactly. like you need yeah. to know which criticism to listen yeah. to because and I had this challenge remember my um, when I was teaching yoga like way back in the day and I had such a hard time knowing which feedback to pay attention to from people who took my classes Mm -hmm. because it seemed like it was like conflicting and coming from these different places. And then it was like, oh, okay, like I see these are the people who love me and want to practice with me, who have like ideas for how this could be a better experience for them versus these are the people who like uh, sampled my class and I'm not the right person for them. And they had some, they wanted to share that with me. And I can disregard that information Um, because he is saying like when someone points out a legitimate flaw in your belief or in your actions, like legitimate, because yeah, like it's different if like, let's say you're doing a project with somebody who's like being a control freak and micromanaging everything and is just like in your business about how you're like using the screwdriver or something, you know? Yeah, that will happen, but then they're sprinkled in between are these things that are actually valid about how you are doing it and how it's being perceived on the outside. And if you if you took that on and did something with it, like figure out how to uh, create a change mm-hmm. in your, you know, situation, then you have, you know, then you're using it the right way yeah but it's hard because it's like it's like they're not 
um, they don't have a little flag next to them saying, hey, this is the one that you can yeah. learn and this is the one you should really question and completely reject because this yeah. is coming from some idiot right. that is thinking that they know better than yeah. anybody else, right? So now you're like, you're in this mixed environment constantly, yeah. right? So it's like, how do you filter through the, these because, yes and these uh, Because let's you know? <laughs> say like there's there might be somebody who's like yelling uh, and screaming at you yeah. and you might want to flag that as the thing to throw away. But, the, but what they're actually communicating through this messed up way of yelling and screaming is actually the flag of like, no, pay attention, listen, this is a legitimate thing. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's not just like, oh, is this other person calm or is this other person, it, it, that's not where the flag of should I pay attention to this or not comes into play. Because I can also look at it on the other end of if I get like really good feedback about something that seems to be sugar coated, you know, it's just more like, hey, I just wanna encourage you and support you and great job. I wanna flag that as listen, cause it feels good to listen to it. And that is actually a flag of like, throw that one out. You know, if somebody's just like giving me well, but that, that, em that empty praise. So, okay, so, so, uh... I would look at that as well the same way. The, yes. the, the positive feedback also same, has a mixed environment. Exactly. It has the really good one that exactly. thank you, like you really helped me with this, right? <laughs> right. Which is super important. And then you have this like kind of like, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to call it fake because some people are just like using it as like having a pleasant experience with others so they approach them and say oh hi wow i love your sweater like they give, give you mm -hmm. a compliment but is that sweater like sparkle like no not really you know but, but it's this like is a, their way of they're waiting you. connecting so that that in my opinion is good but then the ones that are the the ones that you watch out for is that like well if you have something and someone wants something they're starting to kiss your ass like mm -hmm. that's like a, okay these are these compliments uh and actions to get something from me somehow right so that's weird or or then they i mean they you know or, or it's like they don't want something but they maybe want something for themselves to have the same feedback back from them so they're they're not actually thanking you for what you brought to their life they're just thanking you fakely so you thank them and so they can feel better about themselves so there's all these mixed environment in the positive and in the in the negative feedback if you will right so yeah, yeah. it's all over it's a freaking spectrum man mm. yeah it reminds me of um a, a, a little while ago when i would read you things that i wrote I would kind of ask this general question of you of like, well, what do you think? And this gener this question was like so general and open-ended and like you were always like playing the support role for me, which like I really appreciated. And then I kind of realized like, hmm, but like my writing isn't gonna get better unless I act, I get like some, something push, some pushback on it, some like pressing into it. And then I realized like, oh, well, I can't ask you for feedback in this sort of general, what do you think open-ended, you can do anything you want with this type of question. I had to start asking like specific things like, hey, where do you get bored in here? Where does this stop making sense? Yeah. Where does this yeah, feel because like otherwise, a tangent? Otherwise it's so broad that um, one doesn't know what to pay attention. There's so many variables in the article or... Any music, music or whatever, whatever, you, whatever I want the feedback yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like, yes, I want to know where I'm wrong. I like crave it. I'm thirsty for it because I want the writing to be better or I want the interaction to be better, the relationship to be mm -hmm. better, whatever it is. Like I'm thirsty to understand mm -hmm. where I could improve so that I can just lead a better life. Yeah, I can see how to start with actually like, like it's okay maybe to start with like, hey, what do you think? But then have the, what we were talking about, have the follow-up questions. Like the, 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 you cannot end with what do you think yeah. and that's it. No, what do you think? Here is an opportunity for you to just give me whatever feedback you want, right? But then, but if that feedback, it doesn't matter what that feedback is. Once that feedback is finished, even if it's, it was great, that's the feedback. 
if yeah, that's yeah, dead yeah. or if it's like a 45 minute breakdown of yeah. everything that went right and wrong all of those whenever that's done you gotta have i i have follow-ups right because you will have follow-up in that simple answer of the great you, we should have to follow up questions like well great how was this what do you you know was it boring so like more of these type of like what do we because what do we actually want right when it. we're asking for mm-hmm, feedback mm-hmm. yeah it's so it's so crazy like because we like outsource the outsource all of it onto the other person who's giving you the feedback back when you say just like hey can you give me some feedback right it's so open that it's like well yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. actually stas and i had this exact mm-hmm. same conversation That's today fun. And also, like, her lesson was in giving the criticism, like, giving the feedback Mm -hmm. with um, Shiloh because he would, like, share a project with her and um, near the end, like, near the finish line and, like, what do you think sort of thing? Like, can you give me feedback? And she was entering this, like, oh, well, he wants feedback. Like, he wants to, like, I have opinions on this. I have opinions. I will tell him everything that could be improved on this. But, like, really, he's, like... No, like I'm, I'm feeling good about this. I'm gonna ship this out into the world. Like, if you have like some small thing here or there mm-hmm. that's gonna take me five minutes, that's what I'm looking for. But if you want to tear this thing to shreds, like, that's an opinion you need to keep to yourself, kind of thing. Like, that's not what I'm looking for right here. And it took them a really long time to get to this understanding because they were using the word feedback. And they weren't mm-hmm. de- checking in with each other about the definition of like, okay, well, what does that mean mm-hmm. to you? What are you actually looking for? Because yeah. I think what you're looking for is this. And I think I'm doing a great job at delivering it. Then you get mad at me. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what the fuck? Like I was, I came here to do the thing you asked me to do. And then you get mad at me. Like that's her experience with it. And his experience with it is just like, I just am looking for support. And you're just like tearing this thing down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah, and then both sides have the potential. Are legitimate? Well, oh, I was sorry. gonna say like both sides have uh, uh, the potential to recognize this when it's happening, but because Shiloh can say, "Oh, hold on, hold on, sorry, I didn't ask you uh, specifically. I wanna just kind of give me like a feel. Just don't don't go." down into deep stuff i'm, I'm about to bullet i'm about to ship this <laughs> yeah. out right like give give context to the person yeah. right because that that could help right if even if stas is somebody someone who would say i'm gonna give you this very detailed feedback hey now you gave me instructions you don't want the very detailed feedback right so when i start going into the very detailed thing he can be like hey excuse me, man, thank you that's all i needed right so there's like a structure to it versus this like what do you think and it's like well now <laughs> <laughs> I can go all kinds of ways. So, and then on the other hand, or if he's not aware of it and he might be like, hey, what do you think? She could be the one who's, who had an opportunity to say, well, hold on, before I give you, like, what do I think about what, right? Like, she could also use the follow-up questions. So, follow-up questions, follow-up questions, either either from the listener or the questioner, it doesn't matter, get more follow-up questions in there to clarify of what is it actually we're trying to pull out. It's uncomfortable because like more questions, it's like, well, you have so many questions, right? Like you, because when we were growing up, maybe when I've experienced this, I've had questions about this and this and this and this and this. And after the question number seven, people are just like, dude stop asking right like stop asking this stuff, well and right? like, i i have my problem like seems to be like i don't really know how to ask questions Qu- asking questions is not this natural thing sure. uh, the yeah. questions i ask are arrived at through this very mm. like cognitive like labor intensive process like thinking process it's like expensive for me to come up with the question to ask that will get me the information I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't even know what information I'm looking for and I'm frustrated and I know I need something. And so I'm just oh, like, here's a a question to begin with. And then I don't get what I, and I'm like, well, that's not really the question. 
you know, because we grew up in a school where it was like only the teachers asked questions and we had all the answers. And so for like 20 years, I practiced just having answers. And I was like, well, that's my job is to know the answer, have the answer. My job isn't to ask the question. Yeah, my dare, job is dare, to ask as man. few questions as possible because the more questions I ask, kind of like you, the more annoying I'm perceived by other people because they're like, shut up, can we just move on? When you have too many questions, when you're the person with too many questions. But now I'm seeing questions as this very critical piece of the puzzle for like, for just me being a healthy human being. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good for today. I'm good for today. All right, my friends. Are you here? See you here tomorrow. I thought Ollie just stopped it. See you here tomorrow.